Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. So, the world's greatest prayer. The world's greatest prayer. From a gal, from a woman, who thought that that stuff was, like, kind of nice. I don't really, I don't do the faith thing. I don't do religion. God. Okay, I'm going to call it universe. To where I am now and how much has shifted my life over the last six months. And understanding, always believing that there was some kind of, like, order to the universe. But not wanting to admit that it was... You know, the higher power could not be the G word for me. Like, that was just uncomfortable. And that could be where you are too, sister. You could be atheist and go, this is, this is, all this stuff's full of shit. But just hear me out here because although I've called this episode the world's greatest prayer, um, and although I am someone now who, yes, I pray every single day, it is part of my daily morning walk with my dogs in the dark along the beach, and there's nobody there, and I literally talk out loud to God. And I release all shit to the Holy Spirit that I don't want to carry around with me. And I do. And I pray for people. And that sounds so kooky and weird. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I'm getting more comfortable with it now. But if you, like, I don't know, you listen back 100 episodes and you're like, who? What happened to you, Karen? Well, it's, it's called expansion. It's called, you know, for me, evolution, growth, change, becoming who I truly am. Remembering who I am. And, um... And so, but I heard, uh, I think it was Oprah. I think it was Oprah. I could be totally wrong. Hit me up. Email me, Facebook message me. If you're like, nope, it's from this person. I could be wrong in this. But it was something like, if you only ever said one prayer, let it be these two words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, yes, we understand gratitude. Gratitude's talked about all the time. But I'm going to really question you to go deeper on this and not just kind of zone out right now and just say, oh, yeah, Karen, I'm grateful every single day. I, I, you know, I look around and I see things and just, you know, I write it in a journal. And, yeah, I do all those things, too. But you know what? There's something that's happened to me for me where it's at a deeper level now. And I don't know. You know, I don't know if it's life experience, if it's just, you know, years. I, I don't really know. I, I, I certainly do know that I have, I have, uh, been able to become so present in my life that I certainly look at the future. I certainly reflect on the past, but I really like truly spend most of my time in the present moment. I really do. Like I really, really do. And what that's done is really allow me to be in such a place of gratitude at a level and a richness and a depth that I have never experienced before. That I've experienced before in moments. Like, you know, I can be taken back to November 2nd, 2010. Pardon me, November 3rd. God, I got one child born in the second of a month. I got one in the third. And every once in a while, I get that flipped up. November the 3rd. Sorry, Tyson Jack. November the 3rd, 2010, when my son Tyson was born, we adopted both of our children. And Tyson's birth mom had asked that we be at the hospital when she went into labor. And so, although we were in the room, because she had her parents there, and the birth dad, and a friend, and a aunt, and a lot of people in the room, right? So we were outside of the room, but the door was kind of slightly ajar. And, and, you know, hearing my son cry for the first time was just like, ugh. I can go there in a moment. The gratitude that washed through me literally dropped me to my knees. And there was also a combination of just a release of like seven and a half years of wanting to be a mommy and the pain that that is. And listen, unless you've gone through infertility, you might go, oh, I got a friend that did. And like, it is truly one of those experiences that you just don't know until you're in it. You just don't know until you know it. And so it was a letting go of all of that. But I lit, like literally dropped to my knees. Like I remember at the time, I think my, like kind of seeing Ed out of the corner of my eye, my husband, Ed. And going like, I think I'm really freaking out, Ed, but it was just, it was such a moment, you know? So I've had those moments of gratitude that are just, you know, when we got married, same thing. It was just, 
you know, time stood still. But yet, regardless of the life challenges that continue to be thrown to me, and they will continue to be thrown to you, they do to everybody. This is life, and that's not a negative thing. It's like we are constantly given these invitations to growth. Let's let's call challenges that now. I know that sounds like such a fucking euphemism. We're like, oh, great. Put the flowerly language around it. But, you know, my, my you know, best friend just died. That's not an invitation to growth. That's painful, right? And I honor that, and I don't mean to make it, you know, to sound kind of trite or facetious about this, but, like, you know, it is. It's an invitation to growth. Some of the most incredible people I know personally that I've followed, that I've read their books, have been through the most, you know, massive amounts of pain. And I don't think it means that you have to go through shit to get to the light. I don't feel that. I think it often happens that way, but I don't think that it has to. But what I do know is this, is that the more that you can say that simple prayer, those two words of thank you, even if it is the challenge that's being brought to you. You know, I've got two boys that are not the kids that fit in the box of school. And I've gone through the thing of like, maybe we should do Montessori, some kind of alternative school and checked out one and that didn't really work out. And I should homeschool and I should, you know, and I've just, you know, both of my kids are a challenge. Either my kindergarten boy, Kai, doesn't want to stay in the classroom, wants to hit kids. And, you know, the, the school is really good with it. And he has like a full-time aide at his school now to kind of just really help him navigate stuff a little bit more. And I have my other boy, my oldest boy, Tyson, who I was just mentioning, and, you know, challenged with reading and he's dyslexic and they've got lots of extra like resources and, and, you know, uh, people that are there to really help him. And, you know, I just had a, interviews with two different people about each of the boys this week and just like, man, I am thankful that the thing with Montessori didn't work out because I didn't see what was right in front of me with the school. I knew that we had a good public school, but I didn't know how good. I didn't know how much they were working with both of my boys and how much they really, truly, truly cared. And I say thank you, boys, for choosing me to be your mom because you need strong mommy like me. You know, you boys don't fit the box and that is a beautiful thing. I don't fit the box. Neither is their daddy, you know? But I know that there requires some really like, all right, man, we're going to go there with parenting on pretty much each day. But yet I go, boys, thank you for choosing me because I am the mommy that can help you through all this stuff. And because of all the different challenges with behavior and learning and all sorts of different shit, it's just like, They have helped me grow at levels I never thought. Patience. Oh my good Lord. Allowing myself to slow down. Understanding that like it ain't about me. It's about me, but it ain't about me. You get that? Understanding that I get to be part of these little souls life and guide them like as challenging and tricky as it is. I don't, I know I was going to say, I don't think, no, I know I wouldn't want it any other way. Mm Mm-hmm. Because the challenges in my life have made me who I am. Have helped me remember who I am. So I say thank you to my boys for choosing. I say thank you to their birth moms for choosing us to be their mom and dad. I say thank you universe to finding the house that we did when we first moved here. The house that we rented when we first moved here to Victoria. Which mean that we were in the catchment area of this particular school that we went to. And thank you for there being one spot open, which was clearly for Tyson Jack when we moved here and he started in grade one. Thank you for the daycare that we found. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on. But it is truly, regardless of what you feel about higher source or power. To me, there is no greater prayer than simply that. Thank you. Thank you. And the shit that, you know, that comes up that's not good or or just, you know, the moments. Again, I found that by being present opens me up to that most powerful prayer of thank you, of gratitude. And I'm teaching my children from an early age. We have, I'm parked here just coming back from training with my boxing coach, Rob. Picked up Starbucks on the way home. Started recording this podcast episode. Sitting in the driveway now, looking into my house 
and we have there's like a bay window that's in our like in our living room and there's blinds and so as i do up the blinds each morning it's usually just my youngest son kai was up at that time as we open up each blind we say three things we say we say um uh what do we say we say good morning sun because we can see the sun because we're facing east yes east um we see the sun starting to come up around that time and then we open up the second one and we say thank you for this day god and then we open the third one and we say thank you for this day and we say it again thank you gratitude the, the number of times you know this if you're a parent the number of times you're like sweetheart what uh, what do you what do you say thank you awesome good job buddy right how many times you say that to your kids and it's like to me it's far beyond the politeness it's understanding like thank you like gratitude the connection that creates with that simple thing of just saying thank you thank you to higher source thank you to god for life in my, in my body and breath thank you for bringing these beautiful children into my life Thank you, um, you know, Ed, for my husband, for deciding to pick me up in a bar in 1992, December 20th, and give me that cheesy shooter that evening, you know. Thank you to the chiropractic college that I never got in after applying for two years because it allowed me to actually look elsewhere, and we had a beautiful five years living in California. Went to chiropractic college there. Thank you to the voice inside and thank you for the courage that for myself. Thank you for having the courage, Karen, to say, you know what? This, this life of chiropractic that you never saw yourself doing anything but, yeah, you, you had the courage to, to say goodbye to that and to close that door so this next chapter could be open to you. You know, thank you to the, the, <laughs> The, the the other drop me to my knees come to Jesus moment that I had back in May and that I had with really struggling with coaching and trying to reach women and how can I be better and how come I'm not connecting more with more women and you know everything that just really came crashing down and thank you to my therapist Daniel I said why don't you just take the summer off Karen we need space for you and that that Drop me to my knees moment that I had this year. What I also refer to as the nervous breakdown. That I refer to as the, the you know the, just me breaking wide open to become who I more of really to who I am. That that whole experience was necessary. It's helping me route reroute this message that I speak to you because it's it's what I am experiencing in my life right now that I know so many are experiencing as well too. I was like, wait a second, but I've been going through, and yeah, I've been through a lot of shit, been through a lot of shit, but then this thing has happened, and it's broken me wide open, and now I don't really know who I am right now, and whether it is something where I had a serious health scare, or it could be for you that it's like a divorce, or it is, you know, it is a career change thing, like I did with chiropractic, it is a, you know, something's happened with your children, like I, you know, whatever that thing truly is that is breaking you wide open right now, and you are faced with decisions in your life. Stay the same or change. Go stay exactly where you are or move over, move over here. And the move over here is like you don't know where that is. And I know so many of you go through this. And I trust and I am thankful for this experience because it is bringing depth to my life that I can share with you. It's allowed me to really open up this conversation with God. And to feel more of a connection to other people and not, and, you know, shed away a lot of the tough girl persona, which is still a piece of me, which will always be a piece of me. It's always that little bit of a rebel, that little bit of like, nah, I don't want to be like anybody else. I want to be me. And giving you permission to do the same by, by me simply sharing the lessons that I've learned along the way with this and the tools and helping you to rise up to become who you truly are, sisters. So here's your more tip for today. I just want you to write down, I love doing simple more tips for you. Journaling's cool and stuff and action, that's awesome. But let's just write down that, the world's greatest prayer. Thank you. On a post-it note, wallpapering your phone, whatever floats your boat, put it in your car, put it in your fridge, put it in your bathroom mirror, like, thank you. And I just, I want you to be constantly reminded 
Remindered. <laughs> That's some good English. I want you to be constantly reminded of the, of the enormity of those two words. And how many times that you can say it and truly mean it. Because I'm telling you, sister, I am telling you. It's the chicken or the egg. You either start to become more thankful in your life and say the words thank you and mean them, which allows you to be more present, or you're going to become more present because of whatever has come up in your life or is a conscious decision, and it'll push you right into gratitude. The two are like kissing cousins, man. Gratitude and being present, and each will expand and open your life in ways that you never thought possible. I know this for sure. So there you go, sister. So one more thing before we finish, make sure you subscribe to the One Want Two More newsletter over at drkarenosburn.com slash action guide. I'm going to send you some cool training videos and the more for action guide to teach you how to start your day in a place of power, um, which includes gratitude and also video training for that. So drkarenosburn.com slash action guide, enter in your email. I'll send you all those cool gifts. And we will stay connected as well two, three times a week with blog posts that I write, um, information about my upcoming book, which is coming out later this year in 2018. And um, I just really want you to be part of that, sister. So I'll do that right now. DrKarenOsborne.com slash action guide. So I will talk the next episode. A life of more is just one step away from you saying this simple prayer of thank you every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the How to Get More tip. Subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter.